Thank you, Shroud, and thank you, folks at home or wherever it is that you may be for tuning into the Eek channel. Uh, I am your host. My name is James, and I am joined today on my co-host to the right, Cody, and my co-host to the left, Josh. If you're new to the show, how we're going to kind of roll things out is uh, every week we watch a different movie. We, we take a horror-related topic at the beginning, and then we will take a break. We're going to go watch a movie right then and there. I'm going to come back to you with our instant feedback on, uh, you know, whether we like the movie or not, kind of super hot take reviews and um, just kind of, you know, see if it uh, gets the official eek seal of approval. <laughs> that was the grossest seal sound that well, you have ever made. That was a wet so stamp. You've, you've, <laughs> you've thrown me off because if you are new to this show then you would not know that we normally introduce the left co-host first, and I've already been thrown off. So hey, this is what happens when I get to the point where I'm not reading it off of paper. <laughs> Touche. Just, just talking, just talking it out. I'm just saying, when I'm thrown off, you're getting wet sticky stamps. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I like to say that uh, we kind of come at you with informal and very unprofessional Reviews and opinions. Um, we are just a few guys who like scary movies. We don't necessarily know what we're talking about, but we have lot, watched a lot of scary movies, particularly together. Uh, we have at this point watched over a hundred scary movies together, um, and yeah. So we're just uh, we may not have a right opinion, we may not have a good opinion, but we have opinions. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're going in for heart surgery and you're. You know, going through the list of surgeons, and you have the one guy who says, "Hey, I went to a really good school. I've been really well trained." And then you got the guy who's like, "Hey, well, I've done like a half a million of them. Not mm -hmm. good, but yeah, I've done a lot of them." That's us. We're the second one. There we're you the, go. We're, we're quantity. We are quantity. Quantity. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so yes, this is uh, episode twenty-one of the Eat Cast, and this week we are discussing home invasion movies. Ooh. I would. I'm coming in. That coming was... in who? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Phrasing. I'm sorry. That was really good. And I don't know that any of us meant it to be that funny. Jeez <laughs> oh, Louise. Okay. Okay. To get us back on track, I would argue <laughs> that this is one of the broadest. Like subgenres of horror movies. So true. It's it's definitely considered a kind of official subgenre, but it uh, just doesn't uh, it doesn't just stay in horror. It branches. It, I mean, it's very it's psychological. I mean, Panic Room's a home invasion movie, and yeah. it is Panic Room's not really scary. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just suspense. Yeah, yeah. So so it definitely is is pretty broad. There's a lot of different types of movies. Um, from my uh, research, uh, I found that it seems the earliest home invasion movie that really centered around a home invasion. There may, may have been movies that had had home invasions in them okay. before this, but the one that really centered around the home invasion and gives the isolating feel that we know from home invasion movies and just like the kind of... So it's one, two... Four people, usually, as, like, the victims who are trapped in a house. Not trapped, they're in their house. And then right. one to four villains enter said house. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's sort of a... There's, there's usually some cat and mouse elements. There's uh, some hide-and-seek elements. There's usually a couple of torture moments yep. as well. Um, the first movie that really did that was Straw Dogs in 1971. It's really interesting. I can honestly say I don't think I've ever even heard of that movie. Oh, man. It actually looked really, really good, and I was going to have us watch it for the podcast today, but I could not find it available to stream anywhere. Even huh. 
if I paid money for it, we couldn't stream it. So interesting. Yeah, I, okay. it has like DVD and Blu-ray releases, but you know, it's not. It's just not a super popular movie. But yeah. But yeah. So I mean, 1971 that came out um, one year before Last House on the Left, which is mm. probably yeah. the second home invasion movie. Good gracious. Uh, <laughs> which if if you're starting if you're starting off, oh my. Yeah. If you've if I, it's it's I I. Whoa, let me back up. A little mini stroke there for a second. Um, if, if you are trying to begin this subgenre. Hang on, can I just give a disclaimer for this episode sure. real quick? So, we all live in Indiana, yep. and we did something really stupid uh, on Sunday. Maybe awesome. You could awesome. consider it stupid or awesome, or maybe some of you who are not from this area of the country probably think it's Dumb. both. You might think it's stupid and awesome. I don't know. But we went to the Indianapolis 500, yep. and so uh, <laughs> today's definitely a bit of a recovery day definitely. for all of us. Um, it is a lot of, lot of, even with the weather as nice as it was, there was still a lot of heat and yep. a lot of uh, drinking really cheap beer yep. and sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation started 5:30 in the morning. Started yep. drinking at eight. So at the latest. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, we're we're in a, we might be in a little bit uh we might be in a different uh kind of mindset oh, for yeah. this episode. You're getting our B game for sure. <laughs> oh, you can always have my B game. Okay, so uh, if you're starting this subgenre and you have not seen the original Last House on the Left, I feel like that's a, it's a must. Mm-hmm. It's where you have to start. It's it it combines so many different things you're going to get kind of that 70s horror which is so iconic yeah so you're going to get kind of the iconic classic feel you're going to get that home invasion you're going to get um a deeper sense of fear and horror due to just the nature of the film yeah um it, it hits maybe a little too close to home especially in the 21st century when we get a lot of these social justice movements yeah um it's it it is, if you have not seen the original Last House on the Left, it's a must. Yeah. Last House on the Left. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we, we can kind of fast forward. There's been, you know, a lot of home invasion movies, but there's a big kind of sting of them in the uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. Yep. We had uh, The Strangers, Near Next, two of the standouts. Um, yep. I remember seeing The Strangers in theaters twice and just at the time thinking, you know, yeah, this movie isn't the best movie ever made, but this is probably the best horror film that I've seen in theaters, maybe ever at the time. Like just with my, you know, as at my age and, you know, seeing movies in theaters, it was probably the best horror movie I'd seen released since Scream. Yeah. Josh, did you see Strangers in theater? Were you? No, I did not. I, I think I rented with some buddies. Okay. And we were just in the house by ourselves, as you can imagine. (laughs) <laughs> and it really, really creeped us out. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those movies that, like, I don't. I when I like, I knew like seeing the trailers. Like, I knew it was going to be good. I again, I did not see it in theaters. It was it was a little little time later. Rented it, and you put it in, and you know this is going to be scary. Mm-hmm. You you know some of the punchlines, and they still scare you. Yeah. And and the only thing is, I don't want to shatter anybody's. What's it called in How I Met Your Mother? Shattering somebody's glass or something? I, the, the, you don't shatter their glass. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, there's shattering glass, something glass, glass. Glass shattering. Yes. Items, yeah. um, the only thing that drives me nuts about the original Strangers is Liv Tyler's whisper. <laughs> I can't get over it. She does it in all of her movies. She does it in that one movie with uh, Matt Dillon. And one night at McCool's. Yes, she does it there. She does it in all of the Lord of the Rings movies. And that's why Josh is on the podcast. Yep, <laughs> it's not necessarily about his horror knowledge. It is about his Hollywood knowledge, um, and I, it just it it's one of those things that halfway through the movie, I just wish she would stop talking <laughs> because she talks like this, and you can't get over it. And you know, everybody in the okay, house okay. can hear. It. Yep, this is not an ASMR. Just saying. Stop. Just saying. <laughs> you watch it, you're going to see it in a whole new lens. <laughs> uh, so, so The Strangers, and then uh, re- not many years after its release. So Strangers, I think, was like 20 or 2008 or 2009. 
And then it was in 2012 or 2013 that we got Your Next, mm. uh, which kind of plays off a lot of um, the same notes as The Strangers, but with uh, kind of kind of a little bit different take on it. And Your Next is, I mean, it's it's right up there. So, I mean, we, we, we kind of did, we marathoned um, all of the Ty West features, and God, all of his movies, in my opinion, are so freaking good. And like, just kind of rise to the top of modern horror. Like, yeah. So you're next. I mean, if I made a list of, you know, the top twenty movies that have come come out since two thousand, your next is on it. Like, yep. As well as probably all the other Taiwanese movies, yeah. but <laughs> definitely your next. Yeah, and I feel like this is one of those films that was kind of on that cutting edge of a sub sub genre mm-hmm. of. Home Invasion, which oh, is yeah, like that's a good point. reverse Home Invasion. Mm-hmm. And and that's been the big kicker lately. Yep. Right? Like, um, I see I see one on the list. I don't want to I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but there's there's like this idea that like the home invasion is it's something that we can all empathize with. Yeah. But the thing that we daydream about, like the greatest moment of our lives would be home invasion, and then we're able to turn it on the invaders. Right head, right, right, and so we, like recently, that's been the the big catch and huge trend. And like there, there are some that are really good. I thought, um, correct me on some of the titles if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Don't breathe was yep. yes, and that was really good. And like we oh, had oh that that I feel like that takes so many twists and turns. we had a twist and then we had another twist. Yeah. So I don't I don't want to spoil it if you yeah. haven't seen it. It's kind of a newer movie, but but we get we get the original twist and then we get another twist and then maybe we get. Yeah, two or three more twists at the end. So like, it gets <laughs> it gets different. Um, you definitely are kind of unsure who the bad guy is at yep. the end of that movie. Yep. Um, another one being mom and dad. Well, I guess that's kind of classic home invasion, right? With Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And also so, just kind of a little bit of a zombie flick as well. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we did have um, what was the one with the boy, and it was like around Christmas. Uh, yeah. Um, Gosh. That was definitely one. It's named after like a Christmas Ooh. song, and it's a, they actually make a Home Alone joke in it. Yeah. Gosh, what is that called? It's not remember. not a creature was stirring, but it's like that. Yeah. Um, I forget what it's called. Red nosed reindeer. So close. Nope, that's from Puzzle that's, Room. Yeah, well, that Escape Room. That's what's called, <laughs> not Puzzle Room. <laughs> Puzzle room. But but so again, if you've if you're if you're kinda into this subgenre, and, you know and, what we're talking about. And no chat, it is not jingle all the way. Def- <laughs> but it could be. It could be. It's a <laughs> horror movie in and of itself. So I think what's so good about the home invasion movies are they despite being the same setting, there are a lot of them that you will remember for kind of the villain or how they affected the person. Mm. So I think one of the things with The Strangers is, um, trying not to spoil anything, but it kind of doesn't end the way you think it would end. Yeah. Right. And then an- another one that I really liked that I just saw recently was Funny Games. Oh, God. Yeah. You literally yeah. just took the thought right out of my mind. I was going to say, mind. we're not getting through here without talking about oh, Funny Games. God. And that one blew me away. Unbelievable. Um, it's, it's not even for the twist. It's just yeah. it's presented to you very intelligently yeah Yeah. but still really really like visceral and terrifying yep so raw oh my god funny games is so raw and also so theatric yeah how many movies yeah Yeah. how how many movies does the villain break the fourth wall (laughs) look directly at the audience and say no let's try that again and then rewinds the movie yeah Scares the shit out of you while he's doing it, too. <laughs> so you think he's looking at you. My goodness. I watched that movie for the first time. I was dating this girl who liked horror movies. It was around Halloween. Cool. And it was like, she was supposed to be leaving my house. It was like 11.30. Came on AMC Fear Fest. And, you know, so the movie's ending at like 2. Right. And it was like, by that time, it was like, we're too tired. It's a horror movie. And it was terrifying. When he yeah. broke that fourth wall, it was terrifying. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's a, it's a really scary Woody Allen moment. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so I also wanted to kind of go into some some home invasion that aren't necessarily horror movies. And I think that you have to talk about Home Alone. Oh, my God. My favorite movie. Oh, Maybe the best home invasion movie ever made. Yes. 
Do you want me to quote the movie? I can start from the beginning. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> not going to, for the next two hours later. That's a different podcast. <laughs> just sit you in front of a microphone and have you quoting Home Alone lines. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I completely agree. It has to be, you know, and like, and I think what I love, what... What I appreciate that one movie that we can't think of the title was trying to do was mm-hmm. almost like a like this is a real home alone scenario. Right. Right. And then unfortunately we got this like and maybe maybe if Macaulay Culkin was like evil, maybe this is what he was depicted like. But you know, we know watching Home Alone that he's this innocent kid. Better watch out. Better watch ah, out. That's it. That song. But um Home Alone, and I feel like I had to be careful, like talking about the unofficial subgenre, because uh, what the original Home Alone was what ninety two, ninety three, mm-hmm. and that is turning Home Invasion on right, like turning it back on right. the villain. And so, like if you think about that concept and them doing it in a funny manner, yeah, it's it's very, I don't know, very you know forward thinking right. as far as the shot the genre good god the genre is concerned I'm pretty sure that was a chick in my business math class <laughs> genre <laughs> genre um but very forward thing you know i mean you know hats off to john hughes if nothing else yeah. thinking of that idea in a different way oh yeah but but yeah you you hit the nail on the head when you said like recently horror movies or horror directors have kind of come into the place where they're like, hey, what would happen if we made Halloween, or Halloween, if we made Home Alone scary? God, I'm telling you, you guys are getting the shaft on this episode. I apologize. <laughs> the good thing is everybody, everybody's probably seen some of these movies we're talking about, right? I mean, like, we're good. <laughs> so, yeah, but there's been a huge trend of, uh, hey, what if Home Alone was scary? Yeah. And, you know, we got uh, Better Watch Out. Uh, the Intruders was one that we've watched the trailer for a hundred times. And like, yep. oh, we're not watching that. But I the, think we ended up watching babysitter? it. The Babysitter? Babysitter. Would be yep. one, I feel like, yep. right? Yep. I mean, it's, it's in the vein. Right. Yep. Right. And then uh, maybe even a little bit of, uh, well, kind of your next, in a way. Um, Ish. But yeah, so home invasion movies, obviously... It, they're scary because of how realistic they can be. Yes. And even when you look at, like, crime stats and stuff like that, like, these type of super dramatic, you know, someone just randomly breaking into your home and, you know, torturing, murdering, harming you or whatever, they're, they're really not that common. Yeah. But they're common enough that we know that it does happen Sometimes. Yep. And that just like immediately opens the door for possibility. And so I remember watching The Strangers and being so scared and being as someone who likes horror movies, like whenever I first got into horror movies and I had that Nightmare on Elm Street box set, Nightmare Collection from New Line Cinema, I was so scared to like go to sleep because this monster and all this stuff. But then as you get older, like you can really enjoy those movies without those parts of it being scary because yep. it's. Complete disassociation. You know that this is impossible. This is not real. There's there's no boogeyman, you know. And then you watch something like The Strangers or even something like The First Halloween. I was just about to say. And yep. and it's, when this can happen. This has happened. And it continues to happen. Yep. Like, the the... The monster who never dies isn't what's scary. The guy who lives four houses down, who knows your schedule, knows when you're home, knows when you're not, knows how to prepare yep. for you, and then executes this plan is terrifying. Yep. And I feel like that's probably also, you know, this idea, or I guess this exploration of this genre is is why we have the boom of... True crime, true, true crime podcast and crew crime, crew crime uh, documentaries and uh, podcasts. Yeah, because you know, um, you know, the first one to kick it off is serial, yep. and it's this exploration of this guy who knew this girl, dated this girl, mm-hmm. and this maybe elaborate or maybe not elaborate or maybe non-existent plan 
to kill someone. Yeah. And and then you get the making a murderer documentary. You get mm-hmm. the, you know, you even I even some of the Ted Bundy stuff falls yeah. into this where it's I have it's a little to, different, yeah. but still I mean like a lot of his stuff was at least you know the the sorority house was an invasion story, you know. I mean it's yeah. It's kind of exploring that idea. I I have listened to and watched so many crew Crew crime. <laughs> crew crime. <laughs> so many uh, true crime things in the last five years, even if we just say five years, yep. that like I can't even tell you all of the cases that I've been informed on. Like, yep. just so many. And, you know, true crime has always had a, a pretty big audience. I mean, you go back to uh, even in like the 90s with like Satellite Dish and like Crime TV. I mean, my mom was always really into that stuff, and I remember watching it, and even being someone who likes horror movies, they'd be like, Mom, why do you watch all this stuff about murder all the time? That's weird. Yep. But, like, now I, I do the exact same thing. Yep. Well, and, like, I mean, look at the look at the heart of America's Most Wanted, mm. and and those, like, yep. uh, Craig's, Craigslist killer, like, you know, primetime specials mm-hmm. and things like and that. Law and Order has been on for oh, <laughs> almost 30 years. Yes, <laughs> Law and Order. I mean... <laughs> I've maybe I, there could be a correlation between, like the I guess the golden years of horror, and the ages of the people watching that, and I think that the fear that comes from home invasion, is something that gets greater as you get older. You get more settled. You get more secure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your world, your house is your haven. When you're a kid, yeah. you're like all oh, these people are coming to get me. It's you know, mom and dad keep me safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you're in a, you're the mom and dad now. You're going, oh. This is my world now, and this could, you know, shatter everything that I have. Yep. I think yeah. that gets scarier. Oof. Even yeah. just hearing you word it that way already has me a little anxious. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and move into. And now for our feature presentation. All right. This week we are going to be watching uh, a movie called. Sleep tight. Uh, what do you got? Don't let the bag bugs bite. I knew Stop you were it. going there. Son of a- uh, so this is actually a Spanish horror movie. Um, he actually, gosh, he actually. I, I just cannot get it together today. He actually. It's actually a Spanish horror movie. Um, and it's from the same director as Wreck and Wreck 2. Mm. So we watched the okay. first Wreck uh, for our 2000s episode because it was a found footage film. Uh, and it was a pretty good one. Um, and then, so we're kind of revisiting this guy's work. And yeah. this was something, one that he made later. I believe the year was 2011. Uh, Josh, you want to go ahead and take us into our back of the box? A deranged doorman becomes obsessed with making a woman's life pure and utter hell. Caesar harbors a dark secret. His sole desire in life is to make others unhappy. When he sets his sights on Cherry Clara, his sick need blossoms into a full-fledged obsession and he becomes determined to ruin her life. But his thirst for inflicting sadness on others soon becomes maniacally unquenchable. All right. We're going to get back to you in just a few minutes. Uh, After a quick little break, we're going to go watch Sleep Tight, and uh, then we're going to come back to you with those informal and very unprofessional thoughts and let you know what we think. All right. To Sleep Tight. To To Sleep sleep tight. Tight. All right, and we are back. And we're back! <laughs> Coming at you with our thoughts on Sleep Tight. I almost forgot the name of the movie. Sleeping Tight. It's, it's, it is, I, I guess it is kind of difficult when you're watching a foreign film and mm-hmm. you're kind of doing subtitles the whole time. Like you focus on a lot of other stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll go ahead and run down. Um, this is directed by the same guy who directed Wreck and Wreck 2. Uh, I will pretty sure we we didn't verify this, but we saw at least one actor that we are 85% sure. Nine. 89% sure. Yep. Was uh, also in the first Wreck. Yep. And we remember that because we thought he looked like a Spanish Tim Curry. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that guy's in this film as well, playing yeah, a is. very similar character. Yeah. So that's cool. Grumpy old um, man. Also, the name Sleep Tight is the name of the show that the reporter in the first rec is doing. 
So oh. she's a news reporter that does little bits that play like on really late late night TV, and the name of her little spot is called Sleep Tight. I like that. that so that was a cool little nod. Yeah. Which is it's like a so it's a thinking man's nod. Like like yeah. he had to plan that out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or or not. You know, I mean, it's one of those things where, like... You could have named this movie kind of anything. Yeah, well, I just think, like, I, I think sometimes we give these sequences uh, too much credit. We're like, sure. We're like, another director gets an opportunity. And like, it, the, sometimes they stubble... Stubble? No, <laughs> they don't do that. They stumble into a situation, kind of like Wreck, where, hey, it, it got big. Yeah. And... Maybe they didn't expect it. Maybe it spurned other international sequences, and then spurned or spurred. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> and then, and then all of a sudden, they have the opportunity to make another one. Yeah, and they're just like, you know what? I'm gonna go back into my original because maybe that was only isolated in this country or this film, you know, sect or whatever. And then they have the opportunity to kind of pay homage to their own movie, right? Um, well, I feel like we see that quite a bit from like yeah, the indie yeah. scale to like the mass scale. Yeah, and I think that I mean we've learned a lot about the film industry and how creatives work. Like, I mean, he could have had the idea for this film super early on yeah. before he made Wreck. Like, that's always possible as yep. well. He's Absolutely. been kicking this one around for a while. Uh, so the budget for this movie was estimated at roughly $5 million, and the box office uh, gross for this movie was about $6 million. So made made his money back and, and a little yep. something to, to pay off the... College loans? Nope. Didn't have those? Maybe. I don't know. Just me. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> well, it's in Spain. Do they have a uh, universal education? I really don't know. Good for them if they do. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> All right, what happened in this movie? Oh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. Um, I think it's important to go in sequence. So, sure. so what we're what we're giving in blah, what we're given in the first like 15 minutes is this guy um, seems like a working man's Joe mm-hmm. who gets up early, does his job, seems to do it well. We can kind of empathize with that blue collar, hey, get up and do your job, Um, you know, kind of have some integrity behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, And stop me if you don't empathize with this, but to me, that's what I got. Like, in the first 15 minutes, we were really just given one character, and and I somehow I latched onto this guy pretty early. We're like, yes, I, I empathize with him. He's doing the best for his family. Right. And then we quickly understand that this is not the story that we understand. Mm-hmm. And this guy is um, one of the one of the, it's an early scene where we see him under the bed. Yeah. And he is the home intruder. Yeah. He he is so the first scene we see is him like laying in the, quite in, in the bed. The bed intruder. He is the bed intruder. Hide your kids, hide your wives. Yep. Coming for everybody. And with the first scene we get is him laying beside this. Is that mean too old to reverence? Is that it's why you're giving old. me this look? Like, <laughs> yeah. Should I have just not said anything? <laughs> you that have been better? <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> my, my students who are listening don't understand the reference you're making, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, you so, just admitted that your students listen to this podcast. Oh, they don't. Definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, so, like, the first scene we get is him laying b- b- beside <laughs> this this chick. Yeah. We assume they're together. And then 15 minutes later, we find out that he is under her bed and, cl- uh, from what we understand, chloroforming her. Giving her light doses of chloroform. Yes. To keep to her asleep. Asleep. And he is planting stuff all over her apartment. We don't know what he's planting. They never get into that. Mm. Um, we can assume it's anything from... Um, he's putting stuff into her 
skincare products yep. and like her shampoo and yep. stuff. And it literally starts like having an effect. So we don't necessarily know what it is yep. chemical wise or uh, material wise. She ends up going to the doctor because she like has this huge rash all over her body and like the doctor's like, oh, it's an allergic reaction, probably to your moisturizer or whatever. And that's because he's adding something to her moisturizer. Yeah. And really it's a, it's a, I, w- I would call it a, this is a, a diary of a psychopath mm-hmm. um, where he he cannot feel a certain emotion. So in yeah. his case, he cannot feel happiness. And he keeps driving to it and driving to it. Um, we get uh, an ongoing monologue with this reoccurring character that we believe is his mom. Yeah. Correct. Um, also a diary. Mm-hmm. Um, that isn't, it's referenced a lot, but we don't get expose from it. Right. Right. I mean, it's, we, we see him either writing in it or he's worried about it. Right. Um, in steps, uh, we find out that there is a stalker character for this female opposite character. Yep. Um, and he <clears throat> pens it on a couple different people. Uh, the first, the first notably is, the cleaning boy, yeah. Um, but then, but then, obviously, it it continues to happen about midway through the movie. Uh, yeah. After it's already been pinned, we're a little confused. Um, in steps her love interest. Yeah, I would. I, from what it sounds like, maybe an maybe an ex boyfriend who something went down, and they yep. kind of you know had been seeing each other for a while. And then now are kind of re-engaging in some form of relationship. Yep. And that's kind of where it gets real sticky, as you can imagine, because um, they have a moment where they uh, encounter each other. <laughs> no? Is that not true? Sure, that's fine. It's great. Okay. Um, I'm trying here. I'm doing my best. Uh-huh. And uh, Wait, who encounters each other? <laughs> who does? Ooh, yeah. What you we, you talked about three people? Yeah, technically four because you still haven't <laughs> let us know that the the person writing the stalker letters is the guy. We didn't cover that. We, no, we didn't really say that. You're like, oh, and then there's a stalker yeah. character. <laughs> Sounds like there's like 25 main characters of this movie. What about the neighbor girl? <laughs> Somebody, yep. somebody saved my drowning raft. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say drowning? <laughs> Dr- drowning? <laughs> it's it's struggling. It's a foreign film. <laughs> For the love of God, I'm, I'm reading no, for two hours. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing okay. You're doing a great. Show. <laughs> You're too. <laughs> You're doing great. Keep going. No, I can't. <laughs> All right, so uh, we find out that, that our guy Caesar is his name. He's the concierge at this apartment building, and he has basically he's just done everything he can to really kind of run this girl's life. Like he's in full control of almost everything in her life, and then the one time. Whenever she leaves for a while, she leaves because he planted um, cockroaches, cockroaches, either a pheromone or actual eggs or something in her apartment. It gets infested. And then, of course, the one person she has to run to is Caesar to come in and fumigate the place and all that kind of stuff. So, like, he's creating this creating this need inside of her for himself Um and then the, that's the first time she kind of leaves the apartment building. Cause it's like, oh, well, you know, you do that. I'll go stay at my mom's for a few days. And Caesar does not like that. He mm. kind of keeps trying to get her like, oh, no, you should stay. Because as I'm fumigating, we might have to get rid of some stuff. And she's like, oh, just get rid of whatever. I don't care. You know, change is good. Spring cleaning. But, you know, she's just making light of the whole situation. But he does not like that he doesn't have control. She's making a decision that he has no control over at this point. And then whenever uh, we introduce her ex-boyfriend, which while she is out of the apartment, we're assuming, you know, he kind of comes back into the picture, uh, Caesar also does not have control over that. And that is what enters a very difficult variable into his delicate equation. And that's where we end up kind of at what's kind of the climax of the movie. Yeah. And so we have... Caesar literally like 
sleeping under this chick's bed every night. And then now he's sleeping under the bed with ex-boyfriend also in the bed. Oh, yeah. Encountering each other. Encountering each other. And that's what we thought you were talking about when you worded it as encountering. I was like, wait, maybe you're talking about Caesar and the boyfriend. I don't know what you're saying anymore. I got a little confused. That's all right. <laughs> I knew what I was saying in my brain, but... So anyway, yeah, there's a, there's a very... Uh, Heated scene where Caesar is literally like trying to escape the uh, apartment while boyfriend is home. Yep. And like, so it, and he doesn't know he's there, obviously, but like it becomes this whole thing. And then that's whenever they he kind of sees them and Caesar tries to find a way to kind of cover up why he's in there and all that stuff. But like, then boyfriend's suspicious. And that's always a very dangerous place for any boyfriend in a horror movie to be in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And I would say that, that that leads us to a conflict between Caesar and the boyfriend, which boyfriend ended up getting uh, sliced. And that is the one, this movie falls into the category of the psychological thriller that has one scene in it that makes it a horror movie. Yep. And that was the scene. There was, there was just enough blood yeah. In, yeah. in that scene to where now it's classified as horror and it's not just a thriller. Yeah, I wanted to argue that. Like, my knee-jerk reaction was like, no, 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 it's a horror. But it's really not. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's a psychological thriller. It's that saying. It's just, yep. it's uh, it's Silence of the Lambs. Yep. It's yep. Uh, some Absolutely. of these other ones that we talked collector. about. Yep. yep. Which, they get lumped in. And I'm not saying they're not. If you're huge fans of those movies, I'm not cutting on your movies. Like I'm a just, huge fan of those movies. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's one of those, this movie is almost to the point I could... Watch it with my mom. There's yep. just enough blood in yep. one scene that makes that uncomfortable. Yeah. I could have, uh, not to get to spoilers or reviews or anything, I feel like I could have, if if my wife was into, you know, subtitles, mm-hmm. I could have watched this with her. Yeah. Like, it yeah. wasn't it, it wasn't too graphic. Right. It wasn't too over the top. Yeah, even we, the sex scene isn't that graphic. Yeah. Nope. Side butt. Yeah. Yeah, everybody likes a, lot a little of thigh. Side you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> give me a little thigh. You know what I mean? Dark meat. Oh God! Oh. Stop! No. This needs to stop. Okay. Okay. Keep moving. I might have to cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Keep moving. I haven't cut anything out in twenty episodes. I might have to cut that out. Welcome to episode 21. <laughs> Brought to you by the Indy 500. These guys are officially over the hill Whoop! with their podcast episodes. <laughs> it's all downhill from here, guys. Oh, yeah. We're there. Uh, all right. So back on track. So Caesar kills boyfriend, um, and, th- and that's whenever we kind of get the, the peek into um, his, his plan. We also find out that... Um, Clara is pregnant. And so then there's a conflict. Before the boyfriend murder, murder occurs, there's a conflict of like, oh, well, like, we just kind of got back together. Like, have you been seeing someone? And then, like, that is a very uncomfortable conversation for anyone to have in that situation. Yep. Um, definitely for this one, because as far as she knows, she hasn't been with anyone. But we... Know mm. that she has that moisturizing cream will get you. I hope that that's not how it happened, but just saying, whatever. Um, so this movie is a home invasion movie, but it is pathological. Yeah, like it's not it's different. The strangers, which nope. is like home invasion slasher, like. Yep. It is pathological invasion. It's like an invasion of a person's entire life. Yeah, well, and I think I think what's different about it is you you empathize so quickly with the invader. Yeah. To where like there are scenes where he's about to get caught and you hope he doesn't. Like is that is that a twisted thought to no, say like that whole scene where he's in the apartment and like he's Sweating bullets, and it's like, yeah. oh god, he's gonna get found out. And I'm like, no, I should be like, yeah, fuck yeah, that get, guy. Yeah. You need to find him out. Exactly. Like, and like every time that the cop, the well, the cops are close to like catching him. Yeah. You think like, like at first you're like, 
oh, oh no, you're gonna get caught. And then you're like, what am I? What am I saying? Like, get, they, get they, caught. it has like, this Dexter effect. Yes. but he's not yes. likable in the way that Dexter is. Yes. He's not doing that's, anything good. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's a great like parallel. Yeah, where like, yes, Josh, you're right on. Like, he doesn't do anything good. There's no reason to like him except for the first ten minutes of the movie, right? Where you think this guy's good and he's not, and. And it kind of has that like memento feel where mm-hmm. like you Absolutely. think there's going to be something redemptive about his character and there's not. Yeah. Like every every sequence, every turn, every like phase of the film, you're like, okay, here's something that I'm going to like about this guy. Mm-hmm. And you get to the end and you're like, yep, nope, this guy's a dick. Yeah. I don't like him, but somehow terrible. I'm still nervous for him that he's going to this get caught. terrible. So, so let's, uh, let's try to get... A little bit closer to the end of the movie so the movie ends or at least i thought it was going to end at least four different times yep and then there was just like oh just one more scene just one more scene just one more scene and then at the very end we get what is in my opinion best described as a um uh born identity style ending yeah where we have like this big flash forward and we see Clara maybe not a year later, maybe, you know, six or so months, four, four, four to six months yep. later. Uh, well, well, I guess. Had a baby. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was thinking how old the baby was. I wasn't thinking about I was with you. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. thinking about I mean, I, 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 the gestation period. I think, I think yeah. a year is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. probably yeah. good. It's probably about a year later. Um, yeah. And she receives a final note that's packaged in the same type of envelope that all of the. Um, stalker notes. Yeah, the stalker notes were in, and it is him. It's Caesar basically laying it all out there and just telling her all the truth of everything that happened. And yep. you gave birth to my child, and I hope that every time that you look at him, you think of me. And like, it's some messed up shit. And then yeah. that's the feeling that is gives him joy, that makes him happy. Right. Right. Yeah. Weird. It is a it's a messed up movie. It's a very messed up ending. It's twisted in a way that a lot of movies that we watch and we like are maybe twist. Terrifier is a twisted movie. It is not this type of twisted. Yeah, it's not like reality based. Yeah, like this, you could you you feel like somebody could get there. Little. I'm sure uh, the, the use of chloroform scientists would probably have <laughs> some more accurate uh, explanations to how all that worked, but yeah. at least just the idea of, like, I mean, yeah, just what this guy has done to this woman and, like, the the sheer amount of confusion and pain and anguish and, yeah. God, I can't even describe the emotions that yeah. you would feel being in a situation like that. Like, yeah. I it's just insane. This is a fucked up movie. Yep. It's weird. Yep. All That's right. all I can say. What do we think about the visuals? I liked them. Um, there, there are a few scenes that just really stick out. Um, mm-hmm. The first is like the first shot that we get of him under the bed. Under the bed. And mm-hmm. like they don't say anything. There's nothing in the subtitles that lead you to believe. Like anything different. You go from... Like empathizing with this character, like yep. rooting for him. Oh yeah, the, you're the working man, Joe. You're waking up at five. Your love interest is living in your building. Yeah. You're dating. You're young and in love. To finding out at the turn of a switch that nope, this dude is hiding under this chick's bed. Yeah. And I, I thought that was a great shot. They go back to it a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, in one of the twists, they go back to it, and it, and it never gets old. No. Like, it's it's a great visual representation. Second uh, example that I'll go to is um, one of the kill scenes where um, old boy Caesar, uh, un- uh, under the bed Caesar, as yep. we'll call him, and boyfriend are struggling and it's and it's one of our first like major kill scenes that we get yeah um and and the representation that they give to that scene um just old boy laying in the tub we get a couple 
Yeah. Like, you know, almost percussive squirts right. of blood. Yeah. Um, his, his, his face seeing like, this is it. He did not win. Mm-hmm. He didn't catch this guy. Right. Um, it's, it's, I don't know. It, it, very well done. Yeah. Very well done. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what do we think about the sound? I, I, I don't know that anything really jumped out. There are some. There is some use of like pop songs in this movie. Um, some of them even in Spanish, uh, but none of them were particularly like, "Oh, this is a great fit for this scene" or or anything like that. So I'm really not sure. Yeah, I, it sounded okay. I mean, it wasn't a very special effect heavy movie, so right. there wasn't really any surround sound. Everything sounded good. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Cool. Um, was this movie scary? I think this is going to be an interesting conversation. That no one wants to talk about. That's fine. Okay. I say no. Okay. I The home invasion doesn't kind of really scare me at all. I mean, it's creepy. Oh, uh, it's just because you're the only one at this table that can probably take whoever breaks into your home. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Not just break in. Has been sleeping under your bed for... Under your bed. Who knows how long. Yeah, but if that happens, you're already you're screwed anyway, so... <laughs> oh, okay. I All don't right. find it scary the way I find other horror movies scary. Okay. It's very creepy, unsettling. I don't like that someone be under, under my bed, but... I think just the idea of someone actually being able to fit underneath someone else's bed is one of the most terrifying ideas yeah. ever. I mean, kids have been scared of it since we've had beds that don't lay on the floor. Like, there's a monster under my bed. Like, that is that is a quintessential childhood fear. And uh, I actually read a Batman comic. Um, it, it was within the New 52 Batman stuff, if you keep up with DC Comics at all. But there is a moment where they kind of reinvent the, the Joker a little bit. And there is a issue where you find out that the Joker has been sleeping under Commissioner Gordon's bed for who knows how long. And he's, he's so he starts making some comments to uh, Jim Gordon about stuff that no one should know about because he's only having those conversations like on his phone at home whenever no one else is around and like then it cuts to like the joker just laying there underneath the bed i'm just like no no that (laughs) is scary i don't care who it is what it is how it is that will always be frightening to me yep i think it's very scary i think um and again i'm I'm not going back to this movie i'm going back to the idea (laughs) yeah of of a real depiction of home invasion again, not Home Alone. Right. Like we're, we're not talking about Harry and Marv here, as scary as that could be, where people are dressing up like chickens and taking their shoes off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this this depiction of home invasion is scary. Yeah. Where people have it premeditated, where they have their little bottles of chloroform chloroform hidden under like your little. Like box spring. He like, like cut a slit in the box spring and has just yep. a little stash up there. He has his little supply kit up there. Crazy. Um and 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 weird things like laying cockroach eggs. Like yeah. uh, like taking you, the time brushing her t- brushing his teeth with her toothbrush yes. every morning. Like there there are just uh every day or from what we yeah. understand as every day Dropping a new stalker letter into her mailbox, like at your place of employment. Like, yeah. there are just weird things that make it very scary. Yeah. And I and I think again, going back to one of my original comments, like, yes, I would watch this movie with my wife. Also, this is the type of movie that would make her the most scared. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, seeing this. And and having it reiterated over the course of two hours is right. exactly what would make her not want to watch another scary movie for six months. Yeah. All right. With that being said, what is the best scare? Oh, I'm going to go for it. I'm going right in. 
the cockroach scene. Yeah. I know it's strange. You can you can go a couple different scenes in this film. I'm gonna go cockroach because yep. because we see him planting this weird fluid or this weird gel. A couple different scenes, and then the scene where she I, I think it's a I think medicine it's a medicine cabinet, cabinet yeah. at yeah. first, and all the bugs are running around, and then we get like another 45 seconds to 90 seconds, like a span of time where. Everything she opens, overturns, um, runs into is yeah. bug filled. Cockroaches. It's a everywhere. great. It's a great shot. Uh, I don't know. Yep, it's, really that's good. It. If, if there was anything that is on par with just the the first shot of him being underneath the bed, it's it's that. Yep. And it's probably the only jump scare moment in the whole movie, and it did make me jump, and I'm a little upset to admit that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um. The part that I liked, I don't know if it was scary, but it kind of caught me off guard was when he's confronting the the neighbor girl and he has her at the balcony and then you see him like give this this long pause after this ultimatum and then you see a camera view from the bottom, which I also think was my favorite shot. See the a view from the from the floor or from the, the ground the street. Yeah. And you see something falling hitting this car really hard and you're like, oh crap. And I was like, oh, it was just the plants that he had, was supposed to water yeah. throughout the whole movie that he was kind of like a symbol of, you know, his disobedience. Yeah, so that's I think that's a, a, another note that we should probably touch on with the story. This whole time, because he's so obsessive and so really compulsive about being able to control Clara and, like, having all... He's, he's just so um, regimented in his his kind of routine and like everything is like so laid out like he's doing a really bad job at his job which doesn't look like it's a very hard job if I'm being honest I mean yeah his boss is definitely played as kind of a a d-hole but like it doesn't look like it's that difficult of a job bro just remember to water the plants yep but yeah so it's interesting because that that little scene is also sort of like a a screw you to uh, the building owner because it's the the expensive plants that Caesar didn't water from the rooftop garden thrown down onto the guy's car. It's very obvious who did this. Like, yep. It's, and so I think that's interesting about Caesar as a character, though. He's so uh, particular about not getting caught in certain ways. But then in other ways, he's just like, you know what? What's this guy really going to do? Like, is he going to have me arrested for throwing this, you know? Yep. thing down on a scar. Like, he's not going to do anything about it. And I'm just going to do it. I'm going to walk away. Yep. Absolutely. And that just kind of creates another layer to his character. Uh, best kill. There's only one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh! I'm going to argue there's two. Okay. You go. Well, you, you already talked about... No, no, no. no. The, you, take, you already talked about the, nope. the, the, the kill of the, the boyfriend. You take, you take the little hanging fruit. I'm going to go for the uh, extra. Okay, so the kill of the boyfriend. He gets stabbed with a uh, shard of mirror right in the jugular. Yeah. And it was a realistic, like, it was life realistic from your body. It was it, good. There was no flopping, really. It wasn't instant. It wasn't instantly spurting. As he's as he's bleeding out, like, every once in a while, he kind of comes to, and he's, like, trying to move, and, like, Caesar just has to kind of, like, slap his hands down. Like. Also, he's aware of, like, his surroundings. Mm-hmm. So, like, this dude isn't just bleeding all over this hallway. Like, he drags him to... The bathtub. Yep. He like well, it's it's that classic thing, like in slashers and stuff. Like the blood's just flying everywhere, and this is like no. He stabs him once, yep. doesn't remove it until he yep. has him in a controlled space, and that's when he pulls it, and then all the blood comes up. Yep. My just because I had to prepare something else. Oh, my best kill. Ah, uh, just the I, plants. I, <laughs> no, didn't get that's water. Good. That's good. That's mine. I'll um, take that one. <laughs> Um, Slow and painful death by dehydration. Yes. Mine mine was the, uh, it was in the cockroach scene where, like, she goes around the corner and she puts her hand and she, and she like, hits one. Yeah, that's good. And it, and it like, pops. Yep. And, and, and you just know, like, in this moment, how could I strike more, f- more angst? Not fear. Yeah. But angst just in that, the situation. Yeah. You touch it. Yeah. Like, okay, what's creepier than bugs all over my apartment? The fact that I touch it. Yeah. 
and she can't get away from it. It's a good shot. And it's like right on the door frame. Yep, and she's just kind of grabbing fast. the door frame to kind of support yep. herself and just. And she crushes one with her finger. Yeah. And it just kind of pops and it's there and it's so Smears fast. on the wall. And again, going back to Josh's point, like there's really only one kill. So this is grasp- grasping at straws. But, mm-hmm. but, and maybe this goes with visual. Like it's just, it's there. It's good. It's clean. It's fast. Yeah. It was and, good. That was a good shot. Yeah. All right. We got to get rolling. Let's move on into our review. Josh, take us away. Um, I really liked it. Um, I think subtitle movies I always tend to pay more attention to because I kind of have to. Yeah, right. Um, So, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Cool. So, thumbs up? Thumbs up. Nuggets? Um, uh, 60. My man. You stole... Oh, man. You stole my currency. I was... I was... (laughs) I, like... I think this one was sneaky for me. Yeah, I I didn't. I, I expected to like it. I I typically I give the benefit of the doubt to subtitle films for whatever reason. That's sure. just me. I know me. Um, I I probably try to understand other horror or maybe film cultures and maybe give them the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was a great film. Um, it kept my interest. I, I feel like, you know, so we're, we're no, we're, you know, we don't keep this a secret. We watch this with many, many people in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, a film that makes us bored. We talk through it. Yep. I felt like this one, even though being subtitled, we, we were engaged the whole time. Yeah. And it was good. It was a good movie. Better, in my opinion, better than Wreck. Totally Rack. different films. I agree. Yeah. But if I had to choose, if I said, hey, you know what, this director, whatever, horror films, whatever, yeah. you got this movie, you got Sleep Tight or Wreck, watch this one. Yeah. Like, well, also, it's, it's not found footage. So yep. It's able to be more cinematic. You're able Definitely. to get, be yeah. much more creative. Uh, obviously, I don't know the budget of Wreck, but I can guarantee you it was not $5 million. Yeah. yeah. It was, a, this was just a good, it was a good horror movie. Yeah. And especially like, you know, people people who don't mind or like uh, subtitles. This, mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's ideal. It's yeah. perfect. I, I I'll go sixty nuggies as well. That was my target. That was my target uh, t- price price nuggy. Nice nuggy price. Well, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna say a thumbs up as well. So we got three of three. It's Woo! not. This wasn't the movie that I expected it to be. Nope. Um, I knew that you know it was a home invasion movie. It'd probably be kind of creepy, but it didn't. Ha- it didn't fall into the strangers uh, tropes of mixing the home invasion with slashers. And I guess that was another thing I wanted to say about home invasion movies specifically. Um, Scream is one of my favorite movies of all time, and that first twenty minutes or whatever it is, the Drew Barrymore scene in Scream is like the best made home invasion thing ever in yeah. my opinion um so that's what i walked into this movie expecting is that type of invasion and just seeing it happen in this much more subdued but more pathological and almost more frightening way of, of doing it so slowly and so uh methodically um almost just made it that much more scary and so yeah thumbs up for me i'll throw you know 60 nuggies out of it as well. We'll go we'll go three for three here. I'm fine with that. Woo! And uh yeah, it's it's check it out. I say check it out. Let's go. Alright, thank you guys so much for listening. And again, just you know, take a peek on uh Instagram and stuff. Please tell your friends about us. Uh we would love to uh hit that one thousand plays mark. We're getting Woo! close. And uh, as soon as we do, we'll do some kind of giveaway. Like yeah. not, We don't know what it'll be yet, but we'll figure it out. It's going to be awesome. So we'll make sure it's worth your time. Tell your friends. Listen to old episodes. Whatever whatever you can do to kind of, and if nothing else, you're padding our ego and making us feel good about ourselves. So yes. That's, that's probably the most important thing. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. We make spooky stuff for people like you. You can discover more content like this at eekchannel.com or find us on Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, all the places. And don't be shy. We like making new friends. Thank you for tuning in and stay eeky out there.